Hey guys, what's going on? Just a Sunday update here. Um, let's call it January, end of January. Um, anyways, what I got here, I just want to show you. I don't think I've shown this before. Here in my kitchen, just kind of tucked away in a little little cubby hole here, is another thing I use to start my seeds. And, uh, you know, this is not like a product review or anything like that. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, the type of thing I think is really good for you starting your seeds. And by that, I mean, if you look here at this, this is really simple. It adjusts and it can go all the way down to just the very bottom where these these are some petunias I started from seed on January 1st, I believe. And it's, you know, they're doing fine. These are uh, past the seedling stage. I kind of pricked them out, put them in here. Uh, two different ones. These are the uh, Laura Bush petunias I received as a gift of seed. So, you know, you can really grow a lot of petunias for almost nothing. And that's just, I mean, the seeds are like dust. And I have another... Uh, Upstairs, I'll show you when I do continue the, uh, the tour. Just, I have so many seeds of these petunias growing. They're so easy. It's a wonderful plant you can grow, easy to propagate, easy to save seeds from. So if you like petunias, it's really simple. So if you want to follow along with the rest of this, uh, with the channel, you know, go ahead and subscribe, uh, follow along. You'll show, show you how, the, as the season progresses, what I do with my petunias. But anyways, back to the main point of this little uh, demonstration. Here on the side, it's really simple. You can just unscrew that. And you can raise it up all the way up to probably see there's some glasses in the back. Like I said, it doesn't take up any space at all. You can kind of sit in a little, little kind of cubby hole over your kitchen right there or any kind of little space you need. And keep the lights close uh, to the plants. You know, that's one big thing. People get straggly seedlings. That's uh, because the lights are too far away and are not strong enough. So as long as they're down here like this, you know, the plants are, you know, nice. They're not stretching for the light. They're very healthy, very uh, compact plants. I mean... You can't ask for anything better than that. Well, I mean, naturally, petunias, this is kind of how they grow anyway, so it's not, you know, but if they start really stretching out, you know there's something really going on wrong there. So let me go ahead and show uh, what I got going upstairs, a little bit of update on the seedlings and some new things I've planted. All right, guys, back upstairs to my little uh, other growing section. And you see, just this is just, I think this is the uh, Ferry Morris uh, light bulb um, growing station. But you see right here with the the tripod that it sits on, it's really hard to adjust that. So what I have to do is usually when the plants get bigger is I will put something under them like a box or a cup or something to kind of prop them up towards the light, which isn't always the best if you're trying to start seeds with, you know, the heating mat below them because you can't lift the heating mat up as well. I mean, I guess you could if you had, you know, a large enough box or platform or something, but it really is just, I don't know, I think it's unnecessary. But anyways, when you get your plants get a little bit bigger and a little taller, they're going to be better suited for something like this, but you know, I prefer the other one I showed you better because like I said, you can adjust the light level to your seeds instead of your seeds trying to compete for the light. As you see these peppers here, these are my uh, hillside surprise peppers. They're kind of getting a little, uh, a little bit longer than I'd like a little bit. You can tell if we get really close in here, see the in between the leaf nodes, how far that is, you know, if the light isn't strong enough, that's how you can tell they're getting it's not the light is not strong enough because they're going to start reaching like right here between that junction there and then right there where the next leaf starts to form is a little bit longer for my taste so i might have to because these are past the seedling stage i can probably prop these guys up a little higher to closer to the light but you know that's one thing you need to check on if your plants are struggling these seedlings here that's definitely too much stretching Right there in my opinion so i might actually take this entire thing here uh downstairs with the other petunias and like right here there's just some more petunias right there i need to you know thin those out but like i said you don't need a lot of seeds and you can grow a bunch of petunias and they can get overwhelming really quickly but thankfully i like the way they smell and like the way they look so i don't mind having a lot of petunias in the garden or even inside the house for that matter but anyways i've uh, transplanted my cilantro out right here which is doing healthy um, hopefully I can make some fresh salsa pretty soon. I know a lot of people don't like cilantro. It's kind of love hate thing, but you know, I tend to like it, you know, especially when you're cooking steaks or something put on top uh, call me weird, but I think it's a really good combination. Uh, these seedlings right here, I didn't really tell you the two pepper seedlings sprouting up there. Those are my, um, orange elephant trunk. I'll leave a link up there. I think it's a really delicious pepper. It's mildly spicy, but it has a nice, beautiful taste. Uh, you can kind of munch on them fresh, chop them up, or even cook with them. They can make an awesome powder as well. So yeah, so my rosemary cuttings in the back there that are still trying to bloom for some reason. But um, yeah, I've never encountered that. You know, I, I 
actually I've never tried to take rosemary cutting, so there you go. Maybe this is normal. But the ones that bloomed, for that matter, have put out a ton of roots. So I went ahead and transplanted them in kind of a mass. There's about six of them in there to kind of get that next stage. And, of course, I'll transplant them in individual cups closer to the springtime because you got to conserve space. You can't just get overrun with so many plants. And a lot of people, I'm going to stop there. A lot of people want to keep, you know, very, very precise. Have one plant and one cup or one container and space it out. They're going to do just fine, okay? I mean, just fine as long as you don't let it get way too much that it becomes a super overgrown, like, crowded root ball. You know, it's fine to do an intermediate step like this where they all can kind of just hang out and get to know each other and get the roots going and develop some good stuff going on with the plants. And when you really start seeing a lot of top growth up here, just like really kind of... um really growing and getting really going you know that's when they're putting a lot of roots on and then maybe then you can consider transplanting them to individual cups right now they were just out of the water just have their first roots starting to really form really nice so they're gonna be fine you, you probably have a month at least to let them kind of chill in this kind of environment and i showed you another video about transplanting the oregano uh, cuttings these guys are doing great uh nice and healthy putting on new growth uh, no problem whatsoever. And that little sage in the background that had no roots on it, um, it's hanging on there. It doesn't look like it's doing any better or any worse. So maybe it's just kind of uh, waiting to uh, put some roots on. Or maybe they're really, really slow to take us for cuttings. Something to keep in mind. And uh, these rosemary cuttings here, one has the slightest little bit of root on it. Nothing really to report, but as it were, the ones over here that did not bloom did not put on roots. The ones that did bloom... Those are the ones that put on roots. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, two more peppers right back in there going on. And oh yeah, I didn't mention these right here. These are the uh, Arequipa Rokoto peppers. And if you look really, really, really carefully, I don't know if it's going to pick up on the camera here. If you see just the leaves right there, how there's a look, look, little furry, hairy stuff on it. Okay. Well, the capsicum pubescence, uh, which means hairy, hairy leaf, whatever, um, that's what variety these are. So yes, they do have a little bit of the fuzziness on the leaves, which is cool. Hopefully that's coming through and you guys can see that. So that's awesome. Um, yeah, as in contrast to these are Capsicum annuum, I think, or Chinez, one of the two, but very smooth leaves. You've seen these before. You've grown peppers, anything like that. This is not really working out with the reflection. But anyhow, take my word for it. There are nothing, uh, nothing hairy about those leaves whatsoever. Let's bring a different angle right here. Yeah, the reflection of the light's really making this difficult to kind of show you what I'm talking about. There you go. See that right there? How much little hairs and fur on the leaves right there? That's what I'm talking about. So capsicum pubescence right there. And that's a really good shot right there, the, uh, the fuzziness on the leaves. So there you go, guys. Just a little quick update. Sunday here at the Hillside Garden. Seedlings are doing great. Uh, probably going to start more seeds here in the next week or two. But like always, I don't want to try to start everything too soon because by the time April or May comes around, you have giant plants and you can't go outside yet because there's still always that little threat of frost going on. So just take it from me. Uh, I know it's hard. It's really difficult. But if you have the space, you have the windows or you have the grow room or whatever you got going on, make sure you pace yourself because, like I said, it's still January... 24th, 25th, something like that. We've got a long time till I can really start putting things out. So take your time, enjoy it, watch things grow, just to, you know, just take it all in. So I'll go ahead and wrap up this here uh, weekend update seed tour, and I'll see you next time on the hillside when I'm planting some more seeds. If you haven't already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and we'll see you next time here on the hillside. Bye-bye.